Order, all rise and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing in a moment of silence in honor of our countrymen and women who have served both here and abroad. And please continue in st standing uh, for a moment of silence in honor of a longtime uh, Marlin resident as well as a worker, Mary LaFosse, who worked, uh, I think, her entire adult career in the McFadden Manor, who unfortunately passed away last week. Mary LaFosse. Thank you. Clerk will call the roll. Tom Flory Anderson. Yeah. Bucci. Yeah. Christensen. Yeah. Condon. Yeah. DePietro. Yeah. Furlong. Yeah. Kinnon. Yeah. Lucy. Yeah. Nestor. Yeah. Spatafora. Here. Councilor Jim Nestor. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, we're just before we start, we had a nice ceremony uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, you may notice the uh, the 12 pieces of artwork uh, throughout the council chamber. That is, uh, the people that have submitted artwork to the Features of Malden contest. And this was in collaboration with the Mayor's Office, the Downtown Revitalization Committee, and the Citizens Engagement Committee. And uh, as you see up here, we unveiled the new sign or placard that will go on the fence along Main Street. Uh, so we, we would just like to, uh, we've already thanked them, but I'd like to publicly thank them again for all their uh, submissions. It was a very difficult decision to come through, one that, that we could um, uh, pick for the sign. So but we appreciate it. We had a nice ceremony. Everybody received citations. And again, this our work will be um, left up in City Hall for uh, about a month, and then it will be returned to the others. So um, I don't know, Judy, would you like to speak on this as well? Council Bucci. Thank you. Sorry, Council. Thank you. Um, no, I just uh, I think um, uh, Council Nestor pretty much um, um, explained the um, project in, in its entirety. But I do personally want to thank um, the folks who did come in um, to um, participate, and also. Um, uh, tell the folks that as we move forward in trying to uh, work with our community and our residents that the next project that uh, Councilor Nestor and the um, Councilor DePietro and other members of the Citizen Engagement Committee will be working on engaging communities uh, mural projects. So again, I think these folks have led the charge and um, certainly want to applaud and congratulate all of their uh, participants. I think that although a winner has been identified, uh, I think all the folks who did participate are, actual, uh, are winners in itself. So thank you again for participating. Thank you, Council Bucci. Any other councilors? Thank you very much. Next order of business. City Council minutes from the meetings of June 16th and June 23rd. On Council Gary Christmas's motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Minutes are approved. Next order of business. The petition of Elks Club number 965-36 Florence Street for a pool table license. On Council Neil Anderson's motion to grant. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Item is Granted. License is granted. Excuse me. Next order of business. Application for a self-service permit, King Petroleum, 324 Broadway. On Council Neil Anderson's motion to grant. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? License is granted. Next order of business. Application for an outdoor parking permit, Northeast Towing, 75 to 105 Road, Broadway. Ready. On Council Neil Anderson's motion to grant. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? License is granted. Next order of business. Ordered that the mayor be authorized to negotiate an alternative transportation corridor agreement with the MDTA for bike to the sea along the Saugus Branch rail line. Councilor Furlong. On council, would you like to speak, Council? Uh, sure, Council Furlong for the paper. Thank you, Mr. President. This is the uh, next phase of the uh, obviously the bike path to the sea, and uh, a couple of people like Steve Winslow and uh, another young lady, uh, Jennifer McGallis, have worked very hard on this. So this is the next portion to continue with the uh, good things that we're doing out on the bike path to the sea. So I would ask that everybody uh, okay. vote favorably. Thank you. 
Thank you, Council. Any questions for the Council? Any questions in this paper? On that, on Council Furlong's motion to adopt, Clerk will call the roll. Councilor Anderson. Yes. Bucci. Yes. Christensen. Yes. Condon. Yes. DiPietro. Yes. Furlong. Yes. Kinnan. Yes. Lucy. Yes. Nastra. Yes. Spetafora. Yes. Item is adopted. Adopted. Moving down to claims. Next order of business. Sorry, ma'am. The claims of Jerry Feely, 356 Commercial Street, Abraham Feingold, 415 Ferry Street, Majeet Bashat Daddy, 39 to 41 Chester Street. On Council of Greg Lucy's motion to refer to finance, all those in favor, all those opposed, item is referred to finance. Next order of business. The Standing Committee on Ordinance, Tom was referred paper number 178, series of 2009, having considered the same, make the following report. Be hereby ordained by the Malden City Council that the revised ordinances of 1991 as amended be further amended by adding a new section 9.40 requiring rental unit inspections. Committee recommends that this paper be reported out favorably with the following amendments that section 1.3 be stricken and the following new section be inserted in its place. Point three, owner-occupied premises containing three or, four, three or fewer units provided that a homeowner may elect to participate in the program. Second, that the last paragraph of point three be stricken and the following inserted in its place. The owner of a unit for which an order of to correct deficiencies has been issued, may request reinspection at any time and shall pay a $20 reinspection fee upon completion of the required corrections and verification that proper permits have been obtained. A rental unit inspection certificate shall be issued. And three, that the following be added at the end of the ordinance. This ordinance shall take effect on August 1, 2009. Council of Kinnam for the committee. On Council Neil Kinnam's motion to receive the committee report. All those in favor? All those opposed? On Council Neil Kinnon's, excuse me, Council Kinney for the paper. I apologize, Council. I jumped the gun on you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this, this indeed is a, uh, is a new ordinance, hopefully, uh, that will aid us in improving the housing stock in Malden. Uh, particularly, uh, it will help the homeowners uh, who need to avoid bad tenants uh, because it will give them the city... Uh, it will put the city on their side in that case, and it will protect uh, it will protect neighborhoods uh, from absentee landlords in particular who do not do the uh, right thing by the neighborhood in keeping their property uh, in line, and uh, and also uh, will protect protect the tenants uh, from poor landlords. Uh, it is not a large expense; it is a small expense. Uh, but it is also a uh, safety and security issue around the city as you go around. So uh, with that, uh, I would move to approve uh, this ordinance. Do you mind holding that motion, Council? I believe there's a couple of lights on the... Uh... No problem. Okay. Councilor Neil Anderson. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I wholeheartedly support uh, this paper and was able to hear about it in the Ordinance Committee as we talked about it, and I'd like to commend the, uh, uh, Chris Webb and the, uh, the Board of Health for the initiation of this paper. Uh, as the, the chairman of the committee mentioned, uh, this is a good paper that helps us in the city to, to continue to, uh, to have the quality of, of housing stock maintained, not allowed to, to deteriorate. And what we've seen over the years is that too often uh, absentee landlords uh, are, are allowing their property to just draw the money for themselves but not keeping it up. And, and we need... Uh, I think we need this this piece of ordinance that will allow us to have better control over over the review of apartments that they be, as they are being rented. That uh, it allows our inspectional people to get in and make sure that the property is in, in good order. Helps the landlords uh, to maintain their property. Helps the tenants, and I think it's a good thing. And I would would urge that my colleagues will all support this uh, in their final vote. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Anderson, Councilor Gary Christensen. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Just to add on to what the two previous speakers stated, I think this fits very nicely with what we've been trying to do the past couple of years 
with people that live in the community. If you look at uh, point one, subsection point three, I guess it says, owner-occupied premises containing three or four units uh, would be, uh, they could elect to participate, but they wouldn't be required. The ones we're really trying to get a handle on are those non-owner-occupied homes, which from the testimony we heard at a public hearing is the vast majority of the units across the city. So I think this really fits with what we've been trying to do over the years. I want to compliment the chairman of ordinance who really uh, had the committee working on this for the past several weeks, stuck with it, even had a public hearing on it, which we had a couple people testify. And I think the other thing that we made sure to do is that with a lot of these new programs, we pass them, they're implemented, and then we kind of lose track of them. We made sure that uh, August 1st is the start date. We formally will meet back with the uh, Board of Health six months from the date of implementation to figure out whether or not the program is working and what things we might need to do to strengthen it. So I think it's a real good paper, and I would encourage the uh, full council to adopt. Thank you. Thank you, Council Christian. Any other lights? Council Paul DePietro. Thank you, Council President. I also uh, am in full support of this paper. Uh, the fees that we uh, uh, talked about uh, are not onerous on the, uh, on the uh, uh, property owners, whether they be um, uh, owner-occupied or, or absentee landlord. Uh, it does take into uh, consideration uh, that it's just trying to help people uh, on both sides, and, and I, I urge uh, all owner-occupied uh, uh, people to uh, take advantage of the program because it, it will hold them in good stead uh, if uh, problems arise with uh, bad tenants and whatnot. So I, I urge all of uh, passing it. Thank you, Councilor Petro. And if I may, real briefly, I also, too, want to thank the Ordinance Committee uh, and their endeavor in taking this on. Uh, but I also want to thank the Board of Health Chairman, uh, Mr. Christopher Webb, who I know this paper is something that he's been working on, I, I could probably say, at least three or four years. And it's changed and evolved because the way the economy has been, it was tough to get uh, even a council to listen a couple of years ago because everything was firing in all cylinders. Unfortunately, as the economy has somewhat deteriorated and so are the living conditions of some of our citizens, um, it evolved into this paper where Council Christensen mentioned that uh, there was public, I don't want to say buy-in, but participation, uh, that they came in and it's been evolved. That's why you hear that lengthy amendment uh, to not include or exclude anybody to make it something that will work. And I think the, the chairman, uh, the public, and the ordinance committee did a great job in crafting an ordinance that will work, cover both sides of the equation, and ultimately make, I think, more than a better and safer and cleaner place to live for all the residents. So I, I just want to applaud them. It's, it's one of the times that, you know, you, you sit back and look at an ordinance that starts up here and evolves into something that is workable. So I want to congratulate you guys on that as well. And Mr. Christopher Webb, I don't know if he's out there or not. But with that being said, Councilor Neil Kinnon's motion, correct, Councilor? On Councilor Neil Kinnon's motion to amend with the accordance of the committee report. All those in favor? All those opposed on Councillor Neil Kinnon's motion to a roll. Clerk will call the roll. Councillor Anderson, yes. Bucci, yes. Christensen, yes. Condon, yes. DePietro, yes. Volong, yes. Kinnon, yes. Lucy, Nestor, yes. Spadafora. Yes. On Councillor Neil Kinnon's motion to suspend docket rules for the purpose of ordaining. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Rules are suspended. On Councillor Neil Kinnon's motion to ordain. Once again, clerk will call the roll. Councillor Anderson, yes. Bucci, Christensen, yes. Condon, yes. DePietro, yes. Falong, yes. Kinnon, yes. Lucy, yes. Nesta, yes. Spadafora. Yes. Paper is ordained. Congratulations. Next order of business. The standing committee on finance shall must refer paper number 251, series of 2009, having considered the same, make the following report. The annual appropriation order for fiscal year 2010 for general government, water, sewer, enterprise fund, and the pay-as-you-throw pay fund. Committee recommends that this paper be reported out favorably with the following amendments. In Schedule B, increase cemetery PS by $1,850, increase fire department PS by $113,145, 13, 
$113,145. Increased liability PS by $58,593. Decreased revenue reserve by $173,588 for a net change of zero. Um, Councilor Lucy for the committee. On Councilor Greg Lucy's motion to receive the committee report. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? On Councilor Lucy's motion. Oh, I mean, you want to hear it, Council? I'm sorry. I'm jumping again, again, Council. I apologize. I'm trying to be efficient as possible up here. Council Lucy for the paper. Thank you, Mr. President. Just to uh, give a little background on this, uh, this is a kind of the end of the budget process uh, to up to this point actually and uh, just to give a little background on on what the budget process is anyone that follows the in the papers and I don't want to get into the uh, the economy declining because I think we all realize that and the effect that it has on cities and towns because the state gives you less uh, but to give you an idea back when Governor Patrick uh, presented his budget to the legislature back in January Walden was uh, going to get $55.3 million, which was actually $3.8 million less than we got from the state last year. In hindsight, that would have been a good number because by the time that number got to the, the House, the House, uh, they knocked it down to uh, almost 50, f $53 million, which then in turn went to the Senate, which got down to $51 million. So from January to May, we lost $8 million in state aid somewhere. That eventually got back up to $53 million, which is what we're, we're having the budget, uh, in the budget uh, for this year. But it gives you an idea how, how much that fluctuates, and the city relies on the state, and if the state's not doing well, it's a reflection on what they're going to give the, uh, the cities and towns and local aid. So it, it ended up being a, almost a $6 million reduction for what we got last year. So, you know, with that, it, right from the beginning, this is, this is probably about, this is definitely five months' worth of work. Um, I think the superintendent, superintendent of schools was actually working on his since last November, he told me. But, you know, one day it's one figure. The next day it might be a different figure. You're always adjusting. There's a, there's a ton of line items in there, so it's a very difficult process. And uh, this year, you know, with the, uh, you know, I want to give uh, credit to the mayor of the city who does a phenomenal job with this and his financial team, Don Fermano, Frank Vaca, Bob Donnelly, uh, Steve, Superintendent Sid Smith, who does a fantastic job on the city side, the school side with the school committee, you know, doing their efforts. It's a budget that everyone feels a little pain, uh, but we will get through it like we, we always do. Uh, you know, and I want to thank the city council. Uh, you know, there's, there was an every other week meeting on Friday mornings up in the mayor's office with department heads since last January, attended many by the councilors. Uh, Council Bucci attended a meeting with the... Um, the mayor and Mr. Vacher and Mr. Donnelly and Mr. Fermano, and uh, you know, one, it's a once a week meeting, and those those meetings sometimes last three hours. So this is kind of like the end up to this point, but we know what happens during the course of the year. You know, we will have transfers, but it was yeoman's work, and you know, I really want to applaud everyone just getting us through what back in January looked, uh, it was going to be a horrible year, and there is some pain, there's no doubt about it, but to move forward. Um, you know, I, I would ask, uh, we took a vote by the uh, Finance Committee last night, and there was a 5 to nothing vote to, uh, to adopt the budget with the amendments uh, mentioned. So I would ask the full City Council for that same vote, uh, affirmative vote on the budget going forward tonight. Thank you. Council, if you mind holding that motion, if that was a motion, I have a couple lights. I'm sure I'll have more than a couple. Do um, you mind holding that? Thank you, Councilor. Council Gary Christensen. Well, I think one of the people he forgot to compliment was himself. Uh, I want to praise uh, Council Lucy in his capacity as chairman of the committee. Uh, very difficult to attend a lot of those meetings uh, week to week. Even though I am a state employee, I want everybody to know I, I work very hard at my job. So it is difficult to get to those meetings. But uh, Chairman Lucy always kept us updated. Uh, the memos throughout the course of the year were very helpful, I know, to me. And uh, I want to start off by uh, complimenting him. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing, in addition to what Council Lucy said, we had a goal. We set a goal uh, in you know the early fall, winter, that we wanted to protect as many of the, of the jobs as we had at that time. And I think this budget uh, reasonably accomplishes that goal. It does it as what Chairman Lucy said: six million dollars less in state aid, and then. When you add in the other decreases in the revenues, it's close to, I think, $10 million. And so one of the ways that I think we've been able to accomplish that, Mr. Uh, President, 
is that you look at expenses, and this is what I think we had talked about a year ago, is expenses have exceeded the loss in the revenue. So expenses have gone down beyond, you know, the uh, decrease in the revenue. So, again, that doesn't happen just by us, just by the mayor, just by the finance team. It's a truly team effort. If you go through the document, you have the cemetery, you have the library trustees kicking in, you have the Department of Public Works, you have the fire department leaving vacancies open, you have the police department chasing down a major federal grant, and you have the school committee, the school department, that cut $2 million with the goal of protecting class size. So, you know, although Horizon's not quite there yet, I think, you know, the effort by... Council Lucy, the rest of the Finance Committee, and hopefully the Council will get us there sooner rather than later. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Christensen. Any other lights? No other lights? If I may, and I just want to take a moment to, like Councilor Christensen said, thank the Finance Chairman, who this is his second year in the running to head up the Finance Team, um, and it was something that I actually try to talk him out of doing this year. Uh, it's probably the hardest job uh, as far as being places and working together, other than, say, the president's job, because you essentially have to be everywhere at the same time, too. Uh, but Council Lucy lived up to the task. I think it was, it was probably the best thing we could do, because it, last year was his first year as a council. He jumped on the finance committee. It was a learning curve. He took over again this year, and I think his one-year experience uh, on that committee served us well this year. And like Council Lucy said, too, it was a team effort. Uh, and I don't want to sidestep the Efficiency Committee. It was something that was actually Councilor Christensen's idea. Uh, when he was president, I took him up in the offer to copy him. And I put together the first Efficiency com Committee, and they did a great job. And Council Anderson is not here, Paul Anderson. I want to give a thank you to him. Um, while he was here, he gave us great input, not only in the accounting practice that he does as a living, but also on, on the fight department, which he retired from. Uh, that experience, to me, was something that I think would be invaluable come crunch time, which he did a great job. Uh, so I want to thank the Efficiency Committee, too. Uh, being president this year is something that I truly honor. I know it's not the last time I'll be the president here as far as this year, uh, but I think this is probably the biggest thing you do as president is work on a budget. Uh, and this was a team effort. Everybody up here lived up to what they had to do. Uh, there was more meetings this year than I can remember. I've only been here a couple of years. I'm not saying that we worked harder than any other council, uh, but there was a lot of meetings this year because from the mayors down to the, this committee, uh, we knew it was going to be a bad year. And I think the residents did too. So they were proactive in their approach, meeting weekly, uh, meeting efficiently. While we don't always agree, but we, and sometimes we disagree, uh, I think we all agreed to work together. And this is a result of many hours, many debates, and I want to personally thank them uh, for their hard work. Uh, and it was an honor to serve as their, their council president during this budget time. So I want to thank everybody personally. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate it. So, with that being said, on Councillor Greg Lucy's motion to amend in accordance with the committee report, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? On Councillor Greg Lucy's motion to adopt as amended, clerk will call the roll. Councillor Anderson? Yes. Bucci? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Condon? Yes. DePietro? Yes. Furlong? Yes. Kinnan? Yes. Lucy? Yes. Nestor? Yes. Spatifora. Yes. Budget passes. Next order of business. The Standing Committee on License, Thomas referred paper number 256, series of 2009, having considered the same, make the following report. Application for transfer of a Class 2 dealer's license, City Line Auto Brokers, transfer from 22 Broadway to 338 Rear Broadway. Committee recommends that this paper, that this license be granted with the following restrictions, that there be no sales on the lot, there be no storage or display of vehicles on the lot, and that the license be reviewed in three months. Councilor Anderson for the committee. On Council and the Alinus' motion to receive the committee report. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Council and, uh, excuse me, Council Anderson for the committee. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is uh, a license that is one of the, one of the uh, grandfathered licenses that you all are familiar with. You know, back years ago, we used to have a, a number of, of uh, gas stations and car dealers and small lots that had one or two used car licenses. 
And we got rid of most of those, but there were a handful of those that have kind of been grandfathered in. That is that we allowed them to continue. Uh, now when, when used car operators want to uh, set up new licenses here in the city of Malden, there are other restrictions. They have to have uh, 15 car. They have to have a location with 15 cars, and, and they have to be in the right locations and all of that. We've recently uh, amended that ordinance to allow these grandfathered licenses to, to move as they have uh, uh, losing their, their circumstances have changed. If, if their leases and things have, uh, are going to run out, they need to move. We've allowed them to, to move those, those uh, grandfathered licenses to another location. So here is an, uh, an unusual license that we have that when, when you hear that there's going to be no storage, there's going to be no sales, there's going to be none of that, this is an opportunity for one of those grandfathered licenses to move from the area down on Broadway by Broadway and the Everett Line to now on Broadway by Salem Street where it's a very congested intersection and both of the councillors that both uh, Councillor Neil Kennan, who, who this uh, license would be in his ward, and Councillor Judy Bucci, whose, whose ward is just the other side of that street, uh, obviously have concerns about having a lot of uh, traffic and congestion there. And so they were concerned that, that this not be a location where they would exacerbate that, that traffic problem. So. Uh, I think we've got those issues cleared away, that this is just to be a location where the owner of, the, of this license will be able to uh, have an office, to be able to go to, the, to, go to the, uh, the auction and be able to not have car storage there, not have car sales there, not having traffic. So I think it clears those kind of hurdles, and therefore we've got the support of the full council, uh, the full committee, as well as the two individual councillors who represent that area. So I would move that we, uh, we grant this license. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. Any questions for the sponsor? With that being said, on Council Neil Anderson's to grant with conditions. With conditions. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? License is granted. Next order of business. The standing committee on ordinance, Tomb was referred paper number 260, series of 2009, having considered the same, make the following report. Ordered that the city submit to the legislature for passage an act to provide an early retirement incentive for certain employees of McFadden Memorial Manor. Committee recommends that this paper be reported out favorably with the following amendment, that the words within 60 days following the date of closure of the facility as appearing throughout the act be stricken, and the words within 90 days following the date of closure of the facility be inserted in place thereof. Um, voted favorably, three yes to zero, to one no, Councillor Kinnan opposed, Councillor Kinnan for the committee. On Councillor Neil Kinnan's motion to receive the committee report, all those in favor, all those opposed, Councillor Neil Kinnan for the committee. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, we're putting this on the floor for a general, uh, general vote uh, this evening. Uh, I would like to speak. Yes. Oh. And, yeah. and, and explain my, uh, my vote against. I am not against uh, taking care of people. My challenge with this uh, paper is uh, that we do not, at this point, understand the financial consequences of it. Uh, it could be uh, any, depending on uh, what the ultimate inc outcome was, it could be a 20-year payment plan, a 10-year payment plan, uh, it could be as as high as two hundred thousand, uh, perhaps as low as twenty thousand. Uh, we have not had the paper legally reviewed, uh, and that indeed is uh, my real objection here. I do understand the circumstance of trying to get it done quickly, uh, but in light of all existing circumstances, uh, for me it would be. Uh, it would be unwise uh, to put ourselves potentially in that situation where we could indeed have to lay other people off, possibly, because we were put ourselves in a financial hardship without knowing. That's, uh, that's all I'd like to say on the paper. But Thank thing. you, Councillor. Councillor Gary Christensen. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I do want to thank the uh, Chairman of Ordinance again for um, his expediency on the committee hearing the paper. I know the time is late in the session, so I do appreciate his willingness on that, and Mr. President. And uh, to the Council, the reason for the expediency, you know, tonight is our, you know, unofficial last meeting before the break, and so the need to, I think, look at this and possibly vote on it is because, um, you know, this has to make its way up through the House of Representatives, the State Senate, and ultimately to the uh, governor's desk for signature. So that's a painstaking process, as we all know, with home rule petitions. So I think, you know, if we we're going to do this, now is the time to do it to allow uh, the people affected to work with the State House to ensure passage of the paper. Um, as the Chairman of uh, Ordinance mentioned, it was told to us by the uh, Retirement Director, Kevin Morrison, that he's, he, he's not sure now. He might not be sure next week. He might not be sure in six months. But he did say, I thought, that his initial review is that based on the number of employees who could opt in to this incentive, that the costs would be negligible compared to when you do a wide open early retirement incentive where lots more people could opt in. Um, my feeling is that, you know, we took the uh, step to move on from McFadden Manor. We're going to save in the long run because the facility had been losing, I think, half a million dollars, $600,000 a year. So already the city's going to net on the positive side by taking the revenue and the expenses off the budget. To me, this is one of, I think, the last things we can do as a good nature uh, response to the many years of dedication uh, to the community. Um, you recall during all our discussions, you know, we heard that the uh, condition of the facility was always a problem. But the one thing we never heard about in all of our deliberations was that the care was the problem. And so I think it would behoove us to at least allow the affected employees to take that next step and determine whether or not our state representative, our state senator, and ultimately the governor would sign on to this bill. And I would hope that the council would adopt this. Thank you. Thank you, Council Christensen. Council uh, Neil Anderson. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm here to speak in support of this paper as well. I think we do have uncertainties about the financial impact, but I think what we do know is that uh, we have some employees who, through no fault of their own, are losing their job because we are closing down a facility, and that we owe it to them to do what we can to to help them with during this transition. The um, the estimates of what it's going to cost don't seem to be that outlandish that uh, that a city of this size uh, should be able to have a difficult shouldn't be able to have a difficult time supporting this. We owe it to our employees; they have done good service for us, and uh, I would urge the rest of my colleagues to support this as well. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Anderson. Council uh, Paul DePietro. Thank you, Council President. I also uh, rise in support of this paper. Uh, I believe it's incumbent upon the city to be a responsible employer. Uh, these people have worked hard for upwards of almost 30 years, and uh, we're talking about a, a few people that uh, uh, might uh, be able to opt into the pension uh, early. Um, I believe it's uh, incumbent upon us to, uh, to, to do this. We're not talking about no-show positions that we're trying to uh, have people uh, collect a pension for uh, just uh, attending meetings. These people are on the front lines every day, and I believe they deserve uh, everything that we can do for them. So I rise in support of the paper. Thank you, Council Paul DePietro. Con Council uh, Jim Nesta. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, I, over the last few weeks, I've received a lot of calls and emails concerning this. A particular matter. What I've told everybody after reading the ordinance is that this is something I could support. However, I needed to know where the funding was coming from and, and what the, the figures were. Uh, and at this time, I have to agree with Councilor Kinnan. We just don't know what those figures are. And the estimates are too much of a range, I think, uh, to vote this out favor. So at this point, without having the hard facts and having a um, 
realistic type number, although I would like to support this. Uh, I just don't have the financial information to go forward on this. So um, thank you. Thank you, Council Nesta. Council Judy Bucci. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, I um, have also um, received phone calls, um, have discussed the concerns that um, folks who have been um, attempting to educate me and inform me um, related to um, their uh, retirement um, um, efforts. Um, but again, back to uh, comments made earlier by a couple of my colleagues re related to the financial impact. You know, I, I guess I'm a believer of everything is equal. Um, I think this is a horrible time. It's a horrible economic time. Um, these are difficult, by far the most difficult um, decisions to be made when you know that you're actually making decisions that are affecting people's lives and their homes. Um, but based on the fact that, you know, we've just gone through a very painful s several weeks of trying to develop a budget that will also serve the 56 to 60,000 residents that live here in Malden, um, you know, again, we, we've also d been dealing with issues related to folks who are also retiring from the city of Malden who, too, are faced with a loss of a job or um, other factors that may be impacted um, because of the changes that we've made in some of our departments. But just based on the fact that we do not have an actual set of dollars that this will cost us, I can't get my arms around this. Um, I certainly know that it's a very emotional uh, decision for some folks, as well as, you know, I don't think any of us sitting up here do not want to do the right thing and want to make sure that we are um, um, supporting folks in, in, in at a time when it's the the the, the, the time to um, 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 I'm sorry uh, uh, the time to really try to rally around their most difficult time in their lives but again conscientiously I have to be honest with folks in the in the city that you know I have a belief in equity and certainly feel that for us to carve out something different than what we've already tried to carve out for other similar um, 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 personnel would not necessarily be the right thing for me to um, support. So tonight I'm not supporting this particular uh, motion. So thank you. Thank you, Council Bucci. Anybody else to speak on this paper? I just have one question, and I apologize. I know we're trying to stay uh, within the time frame, and this is something that kind of came down, unfortunately, not to anybody's dismay, uh, a last minute because of certain circumstances. I wasn't able to attend the entire meeting um, so the question I would have for anybody on the committee um, is the mechanism. Can you just, I, I, I heard some of it the, at the end of the, the conversation, but if we vote as a council, or we don't vote as a council, to send this to the State House for a home rule petition, with, we don't have a number essentially because we don't have a number. The process would then go to the State House. There's a certain number of days that we have to do something at the state level to make this reality. If it goes to the State House, my first question would be to the committee, when do we get that number? And then B, if the State House votes no, regardless of that number, it dies in the State House. Right. And no pun intended, it, it just goes away in the State House. So my question, I think, would be somebody, maybe you, Council Christensen, is when do we, I know you don't know the number now, and I don't mean to throw this on your last minute, but when do we find out as a community, I know we have to pass it essentially to, to go to the next step, but do we find out before it goes to the State House and gets approved, or... Does the state come back to us and say the number is 10,000 or the number is 750,000? When do we find that number out? I think it would benefit the people in the audience as well as some of the committee members who weren't, council members who weren't at that meeting, because I didn't hear the technical ramifications of that. If you don't mind, council. Thank you, council. Yeah, uh, Mr. President, first, you know, the committee did add an amendment to the paper that uh, within 90 days following the date of the closure of the facility. So if this petition, and it was uh, credit to uh, Don Fermano, uh, the controller, what that means now is it's not just going to languish for months and months and months, hanging out there where uh, the number might become larger than what I think, you know, the committee's talking about with the original paper. So we do have that in there as a stopgap measure. Uh, the numbers, I'm not sure uh, when that will come out. Uh, the retirement director, um, Kevin Morrison, he would continue to work on it, but I think he indicated until, I thought he might have indicated until another actuarial is done, you know, they wouldn't be quite sure. But I think the one thing that the majority was looking at 
you know, once you uh, get the list down to who would actually, we think, would opt in, it's a very small number. So, you know, I think uh, based on that, we thought it was at least worth a try to see if the State House, our State Delegation, and the Governor might be interested in it. Thank you, Council. Any other questions on that note? If not, we can move forward. Council and Neil Kay. Yes, I, I just would like to uh, clarify one thing. I keep hearing that uh, we think this is a small number. Uh, but the only experience that we have, at least from what we're told in the meeting, is that we have a liability today of $213,000 a year from 17 employees who went out on early retirement a few years ago. Uh, so given a sample of somewhere in the order of six to nine, okay. uh, if the sample were the same, you're talking somewhere in the order of uh, if it's paid off in the same 20 years, if the sample were the same relative type, you're talking in the order of 70,000 uh, to 100,000. If, uh, as uh, Kevin Morrison uh, stated in there, uh, that was taken down to 10 years, and it was the same sample t type. You can double those numbers. So that's my concern. Certainly, the sample may indeed not be the same, but we don't know. And uh, generally, these samples for early retirement end up somewhere in the same ballpark. i just say that. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Councilor Gary Christensen again. Yeah, I would just counter, Mr. President, that the one thing we do know on this one is that um, the people that would be affected, at least what, you know, was told to us at the committee hearing, the range of salaries are, you know, I don't want to get into each individual one, but, you know, they're run right around 30000 So, you know, again, I don't have the other, as Councilor Kinnan said, the other early retirement and who opted in, but... You know, I know based upon these salaries, I thought uh, Mr. Morrison did state that's in our favor, I thought, just based on the salaries alone. Forget about whether it's 10, 20, you know, I'm, like Council Kinnan said, he's right, depending on the life or the schedule. But I think that point should be made, that the salaries here, we're not talking exorbitant salaries. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Any further discussion? That... Councilor Greg Lucy. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, too, will not be supporting this, not, not because I'm, uh, I think I'm as compassionate as the next person, but, you know, we just went through a budget process where the city uh, held out an early retirement of $10,000. And the idea of it was the more people you got through early retirement, you keep the younger employees and maybe some people that had the years in that they, they could go. Um, we were disappointed in the number we got because that wasn't enough. Um, you know, and if we were trying to achieve a goal, even future budgets, if, if we had some type of early retirement for all the employees that were close, I'm sure we're going to go to go a lot more people on it. So my, my problem is, you know, going forward, that certainly would have helped the city. If we, if we offered, to me, I think you need, even, even given the circumstance of McFadden Manor, the right thing to do is you, if you're going to offer an early retirement incentive, you offer it to all the employees. And, the, and it certainly would have got better results from a budgetarily standpoint from us this year, trying to get down that number of employees and then going forward, we would have, we would have been even in a better position. So to me, you can't really have two early retirement plans. They had the one plan, and the one plan was given to McFadden Manor, and some people took, took them the city up on the $10,000 buyout. So now to come along at the end of the day and say, well, we have this other potential early retirement to benefit a few people. I just have, I, you know, I just can't, I just can't agree with it. So, you know, as compassionate as I try to be sometimes, you know, I try to be all the time, you know, this is just something I just can't support. And the, and the fact that we don't know the numbers. I'm going to have to give you my rule book, Councilor. No, Councilor Christian for the 14th time. I know. I think so, Mr. President. I apologize. <laughs> but as uh, Council Lucy said, you know, when it comes to this kind of issue, there's a lot of compassion and, and uh, feelings on it. And uh, he, the counselor at large brings up a good point. And I think some of those employees would have accepted uh, the terms of that initial offer. But I think at that time, there was still the hope that this geriatric authority might have succeeded. 
and they would have been able to work going forward. So I think once the uh, decision had been made not to move forward, I think the offer, the initial offer to accept that provision had already elapsed. I'm sorry? Okay, that's not what I understand. I thought there was a deadline of April 30th, but... It was, but they extended it to May. Okay. All right. I stand to be corrected. Thank you. Uh, but, again, I think back to the original point um, that, you know, again, it comes down to what Council Lucy's saying. You know, it's just a matter of, you know, whether or not we take this step or not. It still has to go through a series of uh, hoops to actually make it back to the city and have some kind of an effect. But uh, I thank you, Mr. President, for the... What time was it? Fourteenth? Yes. I apologize. My last time. Okay. I mean, I need... Oh, whoa. Council Paul Cornyn. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I've been struggling uh, with this vote. Uh, the paper itself, uh, I believe, benefits six to eight or nine people. And... Uh, it's kind of what I have the problem with, on top of the fact that we don't know how much the cost would be, because we have to, in the end, balance this budget. There's no money in this budget for that. So if the number come in at 200000 and we had to lay off five more people, I don't think I'd be too happy about that, based on the fact that basically what you're doing is increasing the retirement of people that are eligible to retire and I understand they've done a tremendous job over the years for the community but I've never voted the unknown you know and uh, I don't think I could leave here tonight knowing that I voted not knowing how much it's going to cost the city in a budget so I don't think I can support this in its form thank you no other lights. Unfortunately, I have to hear from Council Christensen one more time. So, Council Christensen, I need a motion, right? Yeah, a motion to. So, I need to hear from you, right, Council? Yeah. On Council Christensen's motion to amend in accordance with the committee report. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? So it's, it's amended. On Council Christensen's motion to adopt as amended, this is the vote. Clerk will call the roll. Councillor Anderson? Yes. Bucci? No. Christensen? Yes. Condon? No. DePietro? Yes. Furlong? Yes. Kinnan? No. Lucy? No. Nestor? No. Okay. It's about a four. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a tie. 5-5 five, five on, a, on a tie. Motion fails. So, next order of business. Councilor Anderson's motion to discharge paper number 69R from License Committee, the application of Michael Monteforti, 430 Charles Street, Malden, for a license to drive taxi cab. On, on Council Neil Anderson's motion to discharge, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? On Council Neil Anderson's motion to receive the committee report? No, no. just grant? Yes. Yeah. On Council, Council Neil Anderson, sorry. Move grading. The Council of the motion to grant license. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? License is granted. Yep. We're going to be moving on to table papers. I apologize. We had to take some things out of order uh, due to technically the last meeting. We just wanted to clean up the docket. So moving on to item 12, if you're following along, Councilors, table papers. Paper number 116, be ever ordained that the revised ordinances of 1991 be further amended by adding a new section 2.13a um, regulating the mayor's authority to negotiate labor contracts. On Councilor Gary Christensen's motion to take off the table, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? No. Can we get a vote on that, Madam Clerk? I can Okay, the idea. So we got... Is it off the table? 
It is off the table. Councilor Christensen for the paper. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I think the council president alluded to what the goal is here. It's my last session, housekeeping, cleanup, whatever's been tabled or left on the docket. So that's my aim. Um, this paper was uh, reported out of Ordinance Committee 5 to nothing. It was voted by the City Council 9 to 1, vetoed by the Mayor, and now it's back in our hands. And I figured this might be the opportunity to try and dispose of it one way or the other. Again, the central point of the bill is to try and give the council leverage when it comes to funding, where the funds are going to come from, and what might some of the parameters be when it comes to collective bargaining. It does not put us in the room with the mayor when it comes to negotiating agreements. It simply lets us know beforehand, these are the estimates, these are where I see the funds coming from, and these are what some of the parameters might be. The mayor would then negotiate the contracts, the funding would come down, everybody on the council understands. Currently, some of us understand, I think some of us don't. As you recall, in the winter, you know, we had attended a meeting only to find that there were a series of collective bargaining agreements on our desk. Some of us thought that was an impossibility under the fiscal circumstances. And I think that's what prompted us to try and come up with some kind of tool for the council to be able to use when it comes to such a high expense item as collective bargaining. I think the figure this year was around $700,000 in collective bargaining costs. So, uh, you know, that's the purpose of the paper. Uh, I know the council previously had wanted a, an opinion from our city solicitor, which I did include for everyone's review. Um, it still doesn't, uh, respectfully, doesn't sway my opinion. Uh, if you go to her uh, second to last paragraph, uh, the word that jumps out at me is she states that the statutory scheme appears. And so it's not, you know, stronger language like you cannot, you shall not. To me, it's appears, it's an opinion. You know, she thinks it's an encroachment. You know, I think we did a lot of work on this paper. I don't think it's an encroachment. I only think it's a benefit for us going forward. Some may say... Collective bargaining won't be an issue next year, the way the economy is going. But I think some of us thought that would be the case this year. So, again, one of the things that I've tried to do in my, it seems like 20 years on the council, but it's only been six, is to try and strengthen the city council with respect to the administration. I think this paper is a step forward in doing that. And I would ask the uh, council to adopt and give it a try. If it turns out, you know, a year from now, Two years from now, the paper's not working. Of course, we can go back and we can uh, adjust the paper. Thank you. Any questions on Council Christensen's um, motion? It is to adopt. No. Excuse me. It's to, it's to override. Excuse me. It's, override, it's to yeah. override the, may, the mayor's veto. So that's what this. Excuse me. A yes vote would mean we would vote to override the mayor's veto. A no vote would be we'd be. A yes vote would be to put the ordinance in place. Yeah. Excuse over me. the mayor's objections. Councilor Kinnan. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to speak in, uh, uh, in favor of what uh, Councilor Christensen said, ha has said here. I think it is imperative that we try to put in every line item uh, that may indeed come forward during a year, particularly when you're talking about a figure that may be 700000 to a $1 million at times and at different times. Uh, just to remind everybody, uh, last year uh, the school department put in a $1 million line in their budget for collective bargaining. I don't think in the, end of the, uh, in the end that indeed affected in any way, shape, or form uh, what the outcome was in the school department's budget. Uh, so to pretend... Uh, in some manner, th that putting a line item, not by department, but a line item that would be a placeholder that would say, geez, we estimate that it might be somewhere in the order of 2% or 3% this year, uh, doesn't hold anybody to any particular department, to any particular amount. It just gives us a budget which is more realistic than the one we received last year when we were told there were no raises in there. So uh, I fully support uh, 
uh, as I am a sponsor, uh, but fully support what Councilor Christensen said. And I think I think I can't understand exactly uh, what the pushback has been here, particularly when the largest department in the city indeed put a million dollars in their budget for this line item. It is baffling to me. So thank you. Any other questions for the sponsor? Council Anderson, did you have a question? No. Okay. Just want to make sure, Council. You're welcome. So, a yes vote would override the mayor's veto. It would it would allow the ordinance to be an ordinance. It let, yeah, it'd be adopted. So, a yes vote would override the mayor's veto. We have the majority. Uh, two two thirds of the the entire council, not the sitting council. So we need eight. So the number would be eight, Councillor. Do we understand? The number Eight, Councillor. On Councillor Gary Christensen's motion, excuse me, motion to adopt that to override. override the veto. Clerk will call the roll. Councillor Anderson. Yes. Bucci. Yes. Christensen. Yes. Condon. Yes. DiPietro. Yes. Furlong. No. Kinnon. Yes. Lucy. Nestor? Yes. Spatifora? Yes. The mayor's veto is overridden. Congratulations, Councillor. It is now an ordinance. Next order of business. Councillor Gary Christians. Mr. President, thank you very much. I would just like to make a motion that we fill the vacant Councillor at Large position. Sure. Council Kinnick? Uh, yes, I would like to make a motion to table without uh, without uh, comment. Right? Until table. July 7th. Till when, Council? When, you, when would you want to table this till? Till next week. Next week, which would be July, July 7th. 7th. No discussion on the table in motion? C correct, Council? No discussion, yes, that's what I meant. Nope, on a table motion. Roll call? If you'd like. You can do a roll call. Councillor Anderson. There's a roll call on the table. table. Yes. Bucci. Yes. Christensen. No. Condon. Yes. DiPietro. Yes. Furlong. Yes. Kinnon. Yes. Lucy. Nestor. Yes. Spanifora. Yes. So it's table. Till the table till next week. July 7th. Next order of business. I believe the docket is clear. No, we have one more. Under suspension at docket rules, ordered that the sum of $97,140 being the same as hereby transferred from the following revenue reserve $50,140, free cash $47,000 to government center gas and light. Councillor Lucy. Councilor Lucy's motion to suspend docket rules. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Rules are suspended. Councilor Lucy? Uh, that's just a transfer. Let me just throw your mic on there, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. President. That's a transfer. It's June 30th, end of the year, for this building here for gas and light utilities. And for those um, in the audience, too, it's just something we do at the end of the year to zero out all the balances. We have to start July 1st with a zero balance or the end of the year with a zero balance, which is general housekeeping. It's not something we just run at the end of the day to clean up. So on that being said, on Councilor, motion, uh, Councilor Greg Lucy's motion to uh, suspend financial rules, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Financial rules are suspended. On Councilor Greg Lucy's motion to adopt, once again, the clerk will call the roll. Councilor Anderson? Yes. Bucci? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Condon? Yes. DiPietro? Yes. Fallon? Yes. Kinnon? Yes. Lucy? Yes. Nestor? Spatifora. Yes. Item is adopted. Next order of business. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion to go into executive session to dis... Oh. Oh, yeah. Do you mind holding personal purpose? I no, actually, I would like that, though. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. We're being efficient today, Councilors. So we're going to start with Councilor Furlong for picking up. Councilor Furlong. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I'll be the first of many to go on and see what they're going to do for 4th of July. Uh, Ward 5, 4th of July, Saturday, obviously July 4th, from 9.30 to 1 o'clock at Forest Hill Park. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, Councilor Bucci. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. And I, like uh, my peer, I want to um, invite everyone down to the uh, Linden celebration for July 4th. That will be Saturday, at, uh, kicking off around quarter of nine. Also, want to wish everyone a safe and healthy summer, and also to um, again to remind folks that we are underway with a new project with the city, and um, it's called Engaging Communities Mural Project. Um, more information of it will be posted um, on our website. Um, we're looking for some ideas from the residents regarding a new um, um, art type project um, in, that we have successfully seen tonight on a different scale. Um, we're looking at identifying a building or a location um, in which a um, company will be working with us at no cost to the city, um, but will be working with our residents um, to actually develop some and design a mural. So please check out the Malden City website for more details. Thank you. Councilor Paul DePietro. You want Council? Thank you, Council President. I'd like to invite all the residents of Ward 3 to our uh, July 4th celebration. Uh, we are going to uh, have a concert at the Felsmere Pond uh, that we uh, started uh, uh, last year, uh, July 3rd, from 5 to 7. There's uh, a pizza and soda and tonic, and we'll listen to some music and uh, uh, bring your chairs and uh, our blankets, and I'm uh, proud to report that the uh, you won't have to worry about geese droppings because we've been chasing them out now for uh, a few months and uh, through luck uh, I don't know if uh, people know this or not but geese lose their flying feathers so when we chased them out uh, we caught them in transition so um, hopefully they're up to uh, spot pond where they belong and not uh, uh, fouling our uh, park we also have uh, uh, July 4th uh, at Amherst Park, uh, 8.30 to uh, 1. Uh, everything's for free. Uh, uh, there's races, uh, something for everybody. Uh, you can look at the schedule at, uh, on uh, my website, www.depetroward3.org, or the Malden homepage.com. So come on down and have some fun. Thank, Thank you. you. I wish everybody a happy summer. Thank you, shut my own mic off, Councilor. Thank you, Councilor Petro. Councilor Greg Lucy. Thank you, Mr. Tough night up there with these lights. Thank you, Mr. President. I don't have a park to promote, but I, uh, I do wish everyone a happy Fourth of July. But take advantage of the parks in the neighborhoods, whether it be Trafton, and uh, you know whatever the individual parks are. You see a lot of cities cutting back on that stuff. Good to see Malden still still keeps it alive. It's good to have that community uh, atmosphere. So enjoy the Fourth and have a good summer. Thank you. Thank you, Council Lucy. Councilor Paul Condon. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd first like to uh, take advantage of the fact that uh, we are being televised to let the people know in Ward 2 that have Friday Trash Day, although the city's closed, celebrates the holiday, Trash Day is still Friday. So we'll be picking up the trash. If you have a Friday Trash Day, expect to, your trash to be picked up. Uh, secondly, 4th of July will run on Saturday the 4th. Uh, we still need volunteers. We'll be there at 7 in the morning. Events will start with the road race at uh, 9. So we have a full day of uh, festivities, and hopefully you come down and enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you, Council Paul Corning. Council Neil Anderson. I think Council Christensen spoke, so we're going to go out of Well, thank you very much, Mr. Council President. Council Christensen, I was trying to speak on your behalf. but <laughs> Well, first off, let me say uh, thank you to all the people that are sitting here in the Council Chambers this evening. We have a, a full house this evening, and these folks came out to, to hear and see good government in operation, I'm sure, and I hope that you've seen that this evening. Uh, it's always a pleasure for us to have so many people coming out and, and listening to the deliberations and so forth, and I hope that you are able to follow along with what it was that we were doing up here. 
You know, there's a lot of uh, protocol that we go through, and, and we seem to understand what it's about, and I hope that you were able to follow along as well. So thank you for coming out, and I would encourage others of our citizenry to, uh, to uh, not just watch uh, the Council uh, activities on uh, access television, but to come out and, and be involved by coming to, to the Herbert L. Jackson Chambers and watching the deliberations that take pl place. Our Council will... Uh, recess for the summer, but we'll be back in operation uh, after Labor Day. So we hope that people will, will come out. Uh, like the other wards, uh, Ward 7 will also be uh, celebrating its Independence Day, and we will be doing that on Independence Day, the 4th of July, uh, at the Lincoln Common. The, uh, the volunteers, and we could still use more of those, will be assembling at my house at 0600 as we move the tents and the grills and the, uh, the prizes and other things from uh, my house to the Lincoln Common. And there on the Lincoln Common, uh, we'll, uh, we'll start our festivities at 9.30 in the morning. Part of the festivities will take place at the ball field there in the Lincoln Common. What's the name of that concert? The ball field is named the Anderson Field, named after this person here who's not even dead, but naming <laughs> ball fields after me. So uh, we invite you all to come out, uh, the citizens of the residents of Ward 7, come out. Let's, uh, let us all celebrate the independence of our nation on July 4th. And to my colleagues in the council, I wish you all a, 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 a happy and healthy summer and Independence Day celebration. And I thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Council. And before I go back to Council Christian, I think Council Christian's cooking show would be kicked off the air if Council Anderson decided to have a show on Malden Access TV. Well said, Council. Council Christensen. Thank you, Mr. President. Before I get to the events, I do want to compliment you in your first six months as Council President. I know they've been Thank pretty you. harrowing, and uh, you've answered the call, so I compliments. It, Thank you. I uh, just want to let people know that uh, Ward 1 will be on Friday night, July 3rd. We're having our second annual outdoor movie beginning at uh, 8 p.m. at Green Street Park at the corner of Wadsworth, Madison, and Green. Uh, if you want to know the movie, after much deliberation, we'll be doing uh, Hotel for Dogs. So we'll be showing that at uh, 8.45 p.m. And then on Saturday morning, uh, we'll be having our traditional set of events. They begin at 9 a.m. Rides will kick off. We'll have the National Anthem, the Pledge of Allegiance, of course. And then I'm very happy to let you know that uh, special uh, occasion that morning we will have... Um, because of his great work in the first six months, we'll have Councillor Craig Spadafore in the dunk tank. So all of you that are looking to get back at him, Green Street Park, Saturday, 9 to 1. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Jim Nesta. Thank you, President. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Ward 4, 4th of July, will be 9 to 12 at Quarter Mille Park. Uh, please come down and enjoy the festivities. And also want to congratulate the, um, the Mets from the Malden West Little League. They won the City Series Championship last night for the Major League Division, and we're hoping that the Sand Nats on the Minor League Division will take home the crown tomorrow night. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Kinnan. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I also uh, would like to invite everybody down to Trafton Park from 9 to 1. Uh, this year we have a special dedication uh, to longtime Maplewood activist and community activist Joan uh, Callahan. We will be dedicating the tot lot to her in her memory. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, the patriotic costume and co patriotic contest uh, for children of all ages. So dress up, uh, decorate your carriage, anything like that. Uh, lots of prizes, trophies, medals, uh, road races, uh, all the food's free, uh, moon bounces, and uh, in the end, uh, we have a Red Sox box seat uh, raffle as well. Uh, so come on down. A couple people won last year. I think everybody had a good time. I hope everybody has a wonderful summer, and I hope we have more sun than we've had so far. Thank you. Thank you, Council. And before I uh, wish everybody a happy 4th of July, too, I just want to go back to Council Conan, uh, who's going to be wishing somebody uh, we all know in the Council a dear and speedy recovery. Council Conan. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. President. As you can see, we're missing our clerk of committees. So I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, wish a speedy recovery to her mother uh, on behalf of the entire city council. We're thinking about you, Sheila, and your mother, and may there be a speedy recovery here. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Well said. Uh, and once again, I want to thank everybody. Uh, not to be repetitive, uh, uh, happy 4th of July and Independence Day. Uh, like Council Lucy said, if you look in some of the, the local papers, a lot of the communities around us, um, not even close, but throughout the entire community, to, regardless of what they're receiving in aid, regardless of what their status is, have cut the celebrations uh, considerably. Some have cut them out altogether. Uh, I'm happy to report that Malden has uh, continued the celebration, obviously, uh, but I think a lot of people in the audience who do not know or are not aware, a lot of the councils up here fundraise all year to do this. This is not something the city finances completely. Uh, and there's hundreds of volunteers behind these eight ward councils that uh, do all the heavy lifting and do all the, 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 the light work, too, as well. Um, as being councilor at large, I get the privilege to attend all eight. I am letting the people of Ward 1 know I will not be at the dunk tank. I will be at Council Kinnon's try to get those Red Sox tickets. Uh, but, <laughs> but I want to again thank everybody uh, for a terrific half of the year. Uh, it's been an honor. Speedy recovery uh, as well. And uh, happy and uh, safe Independence Day. And with that being said, Councilor Kinnon's motion to... Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. I'd like to make a motion to go into executive se session uh, to discuss possible litigation uh, regarding, uh, once again, uh, the misappropriation of funds which took place uh, in the previous year and the thank audit. Thank you. Thank you, Council. And I just want to announce to everybody that the Council will be recessing uh, to open session for the purpose of only recession when we come back. It will not be to do any further business this, this uh, today. Uh, and then there'll be no further business conducted this evening. Uh, however, I do know we've said this technically is the last meeting scheduled for the year. There is a couple items on the agenda for next week. I just want everybody in the audience to be aware of that. Uh, some stuff has come up uh, later in the year and some stuff we have to finally clean up. But there will be a meeting tentatively set for next week, July the 7th. So with that being said, uh, roll call for executive session. Madam Clerk. Councilor Anderson. Yes. Bucci. Christensen. Yes. Condon. Yes. DePietro, yes. Furlong, Kinnan, yes. Lucy, Nestor, yes. Spatafora. Yes. Council's in recess. Okay, you'll call me tomorrow and uh, email yes. me and tell me the time.